So in a previous video, I asked you guys to leave a comment with what you thought was the most underrated Flash game of all time. And boy, did you. Second most commented video on my channel? Okay, now to be fair, my request was a bit stupid. I mean, what does underrated mean, really? When I was talking about underrated games, I simply meant not the ones that have had entire feature-length films made about them. I was seeing a lot of people commenting Waterboy and Firegirl. No. No, Firegirl and Waterboy. Stop it. Watergirl and Fireboy. Jesus Christ. Now, while I'm sure there are many people who haven't heard of that game, I could personally never see it as underrated. I mean, it was always on the front page of Miniclip, it has four sequels, multiple apps on iOS and Android, and it has its own wiki. Did you know Fireboy and Watergirl are both seven foot nine? I don't know what they're doing playing with gems if they don't get their ass in the gym. So for all those reasons, I can't really call that game underrated. But with that said, there may be some games I mentioned that you wouldn't call underrated either. So let me just explain how I went about choosing the games I'm going to mention in this video. First I went to my comments section and looked at what you guys had submitted and right off the bat let me just say no, I did not read all of them. There were over 7,000 of them. I read like two books last year. I'm pretty sure one of them was an audiobook. I filtered the comments to look specifically at the ones mentioning underrated games, and I compiled a list of about a hundred of these into a spreadsheet. I then looked deeper into the comments to see which of these games seemed to be getting repeated mentions or strong responses in terms of likes and replies. This was somewhat ironic since I essentially whittled it down to a list of the most popular of the underrated games. But what are you gonna do? I'm only one man. Then I played each game on the list so I could form my own opinions around them and see if you guys really have good taste or if you've got your nostalgia goggles on a little bit too tight. Now I'm pleased to report, you guys do seem to know what you're talking about, especially with this first game, Strike Force Heroes. Oh my god. I didn't know Flash games could be so good. Strike Force Heroes is an RPG shooter developed by Sky9 Games. Did he just say RPG? Yes, I did! In this game, you can choose one of four classes, each with different stats, and customize their armor, weapons, skills, and even their killstreak bonuses. As you play more and more of your character, they level up, and you can unlock even better weapons, skills, and killstreak bonuses, with the best way of leveling up your character being through playing the campaign. Wait, did he just say campaign? Yes, I did! This game comes with a full campaign consisting of 15 missions and ranging in game modes from team deathmatch to domination to capture the flag. The campaign feels well connected from one mission to the next because of the cool, if not somewhat absurd story, and it's all supported by top-notch music, sound effects, and voice acting. Wait, did he just say yes? I am saying all the things. Each character is fully voiced with lines of dialogue, not only in the cutscenes, but also during the gameplay, which I must mention is very well done. You play with a team of friendly AI against a team of enemy AI. The movement controls are smooth, the shooting feels impactful, and details such as the reload animations help tie the whole thing together. And when you're done with the campaign, there are 15 more challenges to complete, as well as the ability to create custom matches of your own. With over 65 weapons, 4 classes, and 30 plus missions spread across 3 game modes to choose from, Strike Force Heroes is a premium experience in a Flash game package. This game came out in 2012. How I never heard of it before, I won't ever understand. I was probably too busy getting my ass whipped in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, so I guess the joke's on me. Continuing with the theme of warfare though, Raft Wars. This game came out in 2007 and I actually remember playing this one. Developed by Martin Kuntz, Raft Wars is a turn-based shooter where you try to eliminate the enemy team before they eliminate you. The story here is Baby Simon is digging up sand at the beach one day when he discovers gold and friggin diamonds. News quickly spreads of Simon's discovery and soon enough, pirates, vikings, gangsters, and ginger- uh, neighbors 
uh, trying to steal his treasure. The default weapon you get is a tennis ball shooter, but you can also use the cash you earn in each level to buy a single use weapon, such as grenades and missiles, as well as purchasing upgrades for your boat. This game is good fun and very reminiscent of the Worms series, right down to the quips that the characters say whenever they get hit. You regret that. There are also a few questionable moments in this game, such as when the baby can be seen wearing a bra and saying, Hit me, baby, one more time. I don't know what's going on there, really. Things get even more ridiculous in the sequel, when Simon and his brother discover that the location where they hid the treasure from their parents and tax collectors has had a water park built over it. So naturally, they proceed to destroy the water park by taking out construction workers, security guards, helicopters, Korean battleships, and ginger- uh, their neighbours. So essentially, Simon goes from an innocent little baby to a tax evading terrorist over the course of these two games. Raft Wars is a sweet ride, a little bit over the top, but nowhere near as over the top as Hobo Brawl. In this game, the main character also doesn't wear a shirt and is perhaps just as likely to soil his underwear. In fact, not perhaps. Definitely, considering there is a defecation combo. In this 2008 release, you play as a hobo who is awoken from his peaceful slumber by an agitated police officer, and his very reasonable response is to fight everybody. I'm not joking, anyone and everyone will catch these hands, and feet, and spit, and snot and vomit, it's really quite a disgusting game. That being said, the gameplay is actually really good, the combo system works amazingly, and as things get more difficult, there's even a degree of strategy you need to employ to progress through the game. If you die, you can restart at the last checkpoint using a password, and this is definitely needed with boss fights such as the one against a jock, police officer, and garbage truck. Yes, he fights a literal garbage truck. I told you, anyone can catch these hands. If you can put up with the constant burping, farting, and general disgustingness, then you're in for a good time with this game. And you're also in luck because it has six sequels, including one where he fights God himself. But if you want something that's perhaps a tad safer to play during your lunch hour, then maybe give Gravity Guy a go. This is another game I actually do remember playing back in the day, and with it being released in 2010, it's one of the earliest times I can recall Miniclip developing a game for both browsers and mobile. Gravity Guy is an endless runner where you switch the direction of gravity every time you jump. You also have an android chasing after you that you have to avoid by not getting trapped for too long behind obstacles. Success in this game is all about timing your jumps correctly, with the landscapes becoming more and more challenging as time goes on. I love the music in this game, the simple but engaging gameplay, and I especially love seeing the android mess up and die. <laughs> Get wrecked, mate. I must say though, for a game that claims to be an endless runner, I was somewhat disappointed when I reached the end of it. Oh well, at least there's still multiplayer. If you're looking for another game that ends though, Electric Man 2 has an ending. These segues are getting worse, I'm sorry. Electric Man 2 The Tournament of Voltagen is a fighting game where you have to battle your way through 18 rounds in order to qualify for the championship and win the tournament. In this game you play as Electric Man, a stick figure that can perform super attacks and throw around his opponents in addition to the standard punching and kicking. There are multiple rounds to complete and as you progress, opponents start having increased health and also start coming in larger groups. I don't know what sort of fight regulator decided a 6 versus 1 was a fair matchup, but I'll be wanting a word with them after this. There's also an energy bar to keep track of, since this determines how many special attacks you have available, and the different groups you fight each have their own special characteristics, such as being experts at dodging attacks or being able to regenerate health. Once you fight through all the rounds, your final fight is against Death and his 8 goons. Who said 9 versus 1 was unfair? Me. I said it was unfair. Nonetheless, I handled it with 23 health points to spare, meaning I truly am the Voltagen champion. Oh, I get it, Voltagen, like voltage? And the dude's called Electric Man. 
That's smart, but not as smart as you'd have to be to develop this next game. Super Mario 63. Holy damn! This game is unbelievable. Flash developer Runno managed to produce an absolute banger with this 2009 Newgrounds release. The game combines elements of Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Sunshine to give us this sprawling adventure complete with familiar characteristics, an in-depth control system, and a fully realized narrative. This game feels massive in scale. It's genuinely hard to believe that this thing was made in Flash. There are collectibles, boss battles, flight mechanics, water mechanics, actual mechanics. The game controls very well and features music, sounds, and sprites created by other very talented artists. This game feels like a huge group fan project, and all these elements come together to form the most genuine feeling Mario experience I could possibly imagine. Short of going out, stomping on a kid dressed as a Goomba, stealing his Switch, and playing Super Mario Odyssey for myself. And as if that wasn't enough, this game comes with a level designer where you can create stages of your own and share them with the community. This game was Mario Maker before Mario made Mario Maker. Super Mario 63 is a towering achievement in Flash game development, and I genuinely cannot believe I had never heard of it before. But to be fair, I can't even be sure my laptop back then would have been able to run it. I mean, I played this thing on my 2018 custom-built gaming PC, and I was barely getting 30 frames, so maybe it was for the best. And that's it guys, those are the most underrated Flash games as chosen by you. Honestly, my eyes were truly opened to the sheer quality that can be achieved with Flash games. I mean, I was out here talking about Cube Field. I mean, Q feels great, don't get me wrong, but I mean, come on. Now, I'm sure there are more than a few of you guys who feel like there was a game I should have mentioned, but didn't. And if that's you, then you might want to leave a like on this video, because depending on how much you guys enjoy this one, I might be making another one where I go over even more underrated Flash games. And not only that, I'm also going to be making a video on the most successful Flash games ever made. Some might even call them overrated. So if you want to see that, make sure you're subscribed with your channel notifications turned on so you can be the first to know when it goes up. But until then, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.